what's going on Warriors, it's Guru Joe, and I'm just gonna continue the Kali progression we've been working on. So, uh, one of the things we did in the last few segments was, was how to get the stick moving. We did some Ferretti Abanico progressions. I went through some of the single stick exercises that I'm a really big fan of, like the Keylot or Trespassonus that would take backhand, forehand, and then the San Miguel flow, which is forehand, backhand, up and forehand, and why we do those, along with the single stick warm-ups, one side of the X, other side of the X, figure eight down, figure eight up. So if this is a little too far ahead, maybe go back and watch that. And then of course, we're actually organizing our own online curriculum. So we really appreciate it when you guys like and subscribe to the channel. And very shortly, we'll be putting out a curriculum that'll really give you a foundation in all these arts, like Gracie Jiu Jitsu, Muay Thai, Western Boxing, and Kali and JKD right here. So, uh, this five count comes out of a different combination that we're gonna do called the Amara. And you can add in or prefix a lot on the front end to really get variety. So I'm, I'm giving you a chunk here, but I think it's enough to play with rather than do the whole thing. This is one of the first Espada Idaga exercises that we cover. And uh, the Espada Idaga can be looked at as like, long and short basically so i have something of uneven lengths so it doesn't have to be stick and knife it could be a machete and a pocket knife or a tactical flashlight it's anything long and short so it could be blunt object and shield like maybe you're at home and you've got some stick near the back door and you got a frying pan in the other hand so anything of unequal lengths it's also really good for training uh, sword and shield as the uh, progressions are almost identical. Like a lot of things, you can put this in an empty hand. If you were on our Facebook page the other day, I showed a brief demonstration of how you would apply this empty hand as well, okay? So we're gonna start from the open position. And one of the things that gives people a little bit of trouble in this first setup is they, they run into their own knife, juggling this here, they feel like they're gonna cut themselves. So what you're gonna do is you can start open, and as I swing, I'm gonna lower the knife. And this is a very familiar looking position if you're in the Villa Braille community, as it looks like a stoka number two, which is a standard guard position. So I start open, but as I swing, the knife comes down, okay? Imagine I went through the 12 angles of attack that I did previously. I'm gonna to have to navigate where this knife goes anyway, just because I have two things in my hand. So this will help you out with that as well. So I forehand and drop the knife. Now I backhand, but it's gonna become a redondo. So instead of a lopting and slashing through, I'm gonna hit the backhand and let it fall. And as it falls, the dagger's gonna come up to shoulder level like this. And now I can strike through, I can backhand, I can thrust. So we'll do that again, but from the side, see I, Forehand and the knife comes down. Now my backhand and as the stick falls, the knife comes up. I thrust, backhand, and thrust. So those are your five motions. So um, traditionally when I was taught, we did the footwork. That's still in use today. So I'm just gonna keep it in there. You can do it stationary. You can do it with retreating footwork, all kinds of stuff, right? So I'm gonna go forehand, backhand redondo, palm down thrust, and roll it to palm up. Backhand and palm up thrust. Forehand, backhand, palm down, palm up. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, like that. Okay, so why the rolling action? So uh, if you go through the numbering system again, and we go angle one, angle two, angle three, angle four, angle five, or angle five, they can all be slashes, right? They can also all be thrusts. Thrust, thrust angle two, three, four, five. And I don't want to get too much of the knife work. Uh, again, we're going to be bringing that out more later, but uh, our opinion is we just don't really like to do this publicly where anybody can see it. We'll show a lot of knife defense work, but I don't want to show, I don't you never know who's watching and what kind of information I'm going to be handing out. But uh, one of the ideas you want, along with that, slashes and thrust, is combine them. So thrust to slash, thrust to slash, thrust to slash, thrust to slash like that, right? Thrust to slash. 
and you could go in reverse. I can slash to thrust, slash to thrust, etc., etc., etc. So that's what we're doing here on the opposite side. One, two, thrust to slash like that. That's it. So it's just giving you another component to work on right there. So one, two, three, four, five. So with a partner, I would come in diagonally so we can match. We might step parallel to each other here and get the angle, and then we'll meet back up with his back end, and we'll touch the forearm and come back. Without a partner, though, I could do a vertical redondo. It might be more comfortable. So forehand, vertical, thrust, and thrust. Again, I could also come in sideways and then do the redondo. So the target is that chin or head, but I can come in this way, as long as I don't lock tick, I can still bring that straight down. And sometimes even that one to two, that's a hit. In fact, that's part of the full sequence on the front half that we're skipping over today, just because I think this will give you a little fluidity to work on, and there's plenty of practice. So forehand, backhand redondo, thrust, that's it. Forehand, backhand diagonal redondo, thrust. Forehand, sideways or horizontal redondo, thrust. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about prefixing. What you want to do is keep this layer constant. So you're always going to be doing this five count part of the Amaran. The forehand, the backhand, the thrust, and the backhand thrust that way. Okay, so we're not going to change that. What we're going to allow ourselves to do is put anything on the front half as long as we enter with a forehand. And again, if you don't have these tools, uh, you can easily do this with like a tactical flashlight and a ballpoint pen, whatever you got around the house. Spatula, I'm a big fan of kitchen tools. Spatula in one hand, dinner fork in the other, whatever you got, okay? So, a few weeks ago, I've been leading up to this, we did those striking progressions I mentioned. So go back to those if you don't have them, but you can easily add them in. So let's say one side of the X. One side of the X, that's my third forehand, backhand redondo, thrust. So see, I'm doing three motions now, but I'm ending on a forehand, so now it's easy to come in with the backhand line. Horizontal, backhand, redondo. Upward figure eight, backhand, redondo. High loop figure eight, backhand, redondo. Low loop figure eight, backhand, redondo. Upward figure eight, backhand, redondo. Abanico with tick, backhand redondo. Abanico with tick low, backhand redondo. All high, backhand redondo. So there's a lot of variety that you can put in. And the only key factor is I'm entering on a forehand. So let's take the Abanico with tick. I went high, low, high. Now that forehand is going to travel through, and I'm right back to this closed guard position. So I backhand, forehand thrust. Backhand, backhand thrust. Horizontal, forehand, backhand, forehand, back to this position. That's it. So you can really impart anything. You can get super creative. I can even start on the backhand side. With tick, backhand, forehand. That trespassons that we did about a week ago, I can close it with tick, backhand, forehand. And then go. See, that's the trespassons right there. And then the combination. I could go forehand, backhand, uppercut, break down the no. Really, I could just be moving anything, but now when I get the forehand, then I'm going to go into this Amara flow just like that. So you could get tremendously creative with it. But here's the thing, and this is beautiful. This is really good advice that I received coming up that really helps with development. Any martial art, what you want to do is you want to have something that's constant. I am working on this skill. I'm honing my jab, maybe in Western boxing. I am working on an arm bar in jiu-jitsu. So you have something that's constant, you don't change it. Bruce Lee called this sticking to the nucleus. Then you wanna have a dynamic component that just allows you to have a little bit of flow. If you do too much, what happens? You break down into chaos, man. If I ask you to do all this all at once, 12 angles of attack, combination, jump kick, and then into this, maybe you won't get it, right? So you've gotta break it down into pieces first. Okay, let's just get this first basic five count that we started with down. Now I think I'm ready 
to add something in the front, but I'm gonna keep the back end my constant. It's always gonna be the same. Whether I do downward X, arm or up. Upper X, arm or up. That's it, one side of the X, arm or up. Other side of the X, arm or up. So I'm keeping one thing constant, but allowing creativity elsewhere. And Bruce Lee called that liberating from the nucleus because we're still using the structure, but now we're allowing a little bit of freedom. And just like kids, you gotta know when you've been given too much freedom. And how you can tell for yourself when you're training is if you're over there going, uh, I don't even, uh, I don't, I don't know what to start with, that's too much, dial it back. So then what you can do is you can make it even more consistent. Okay, I'm gonna set a clock, a round timer maybe, for two minutes, I'm only gonna do downward X and into the combination. For two minutes after that, I'm only gonna do upward X. And that way you'll have consistent practice. Because in the video here, I'm just busting these out really fast to give you guys some quick opportunity to catch some curriculum and show you what the possibilities are. Even when I train on my own, which I'm gonna do here in a couple minutes, I'm not gonna do just everything at random the whole time, but I've practiced it enough consistently and keeping constants that I could set a two minute timer and go, you know what, I'm, I'm just gonna do random figure eights and then into the combination as a constant. And I won't be slowing down, my form hopefully won't look terrible and all that, but you gotta have consistency. You have to have those constant layers first and then you can move in to creativity. You know, just like kids, man, you gotta have a little consistency up front and it'll pay off with a little more freedom later. All right, you guys, that's been the Amaran. Um, there's a continuation for this, which I will try to get done in a few days from now after you guys have a chance to practice and season this. As always, we greatly appreciate you liking and subscribing to the channel. Warriors.